Denise Stony Creek. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and I'll be sharing my time today with the new member of parliament for Scarborough Rouge River. And, and before I start my remarks, uh, something that he just said, yes, they'll be listening to seniors, for sure. They'll be listening to the growl of their stomachs as they're sitting there in hunger. Uh, I want to take a moment, too, to recognize the member for London Panshaw, who uh, has taken over this particular critic area of seniors. Because I had the seniors and pensions over the last couple of years, in fact, uh, since 2009. And I am very proud that we're going to have this dynamic woman taking on this challenge. So I'm looking forward to see the work that will come out of her in the next little while. You know, this, the NDP in retirement security is nothing new. 1927, the Labour Party of the day forced the McKenzie government to bring in old age security because we have Canadians starving across our country. And in 1966, NDP Stanley Knowles, again with a liberal minority, went to them and said, we have to have something broader, something for every Canadian to have a pension plan. And that was the Canada Pension Plan. And of course, uh, again, it was something that was passed and it put forward. But we find ourselves today in, in a crisis. And the, and the crisis is the fact that the, the Canada Pension Plan going forward is not going to be effective enough. But a more urgent crisis that we have today is between 250 to 300,000 seniors who are living clearly below the poverty line. They are living on approximately $1,162 a month when you combine GIS and OIS. You know, and part of the real tragedy, Mr. Speaker, is most of these people are women, women who had the, the menial jobs or perhaps never got the chance to, to line up and get into CPP with the rest of us. And, and it's very, very troubling. Uh, I've been the critic since 2009, as I've said, and I, I've, I've got a number of stories to tell, but you know, when I was considering what to talk about here today, because I knew my turn was coming up, and, and I, I think there's a, a myth, uh, for lack of a better word. You'll recall in the recent election plan we were talking about what the NDP thought would, would be the appropriate thing to do. Well, that wasn't new, Mr. Speaker. That wasn't new at all. In June of 2009, in this House, we passed an Opposition Day motion unanimously they voted for it, and the number one piece in that was $700 million to raise seniors out of poverty. And the figure in that was 250,000 seniors. So when we pause to take a look at, at the half measure, or I'd say half of a half measure, because $700 million over 250 to 300,000 is approximately $230 a month increase. The measure you're getting across here is $50, a dollar and 65 cents a day. And in Ontario and BC, guess what? That's already eaten up by the HST. So, you know, I, I'd love to have had them listen to us because they voted with us. They gave the impression they listened to us. And the NDP went across this country and, and you hear about this solid mandate they got. Well, guess whose caucus tripled in this last election? Because seniors were listening to us, because Canadians were listening to us. Because they knew that our number one proposal in our election plan, the very first thing, was to increase the GIS to an adequate level for seniors, to get these seniors above the poverty line. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm not going to take any lessons from the member from Calgary West at all on this one. But that Opposition Day motion that we put into place had a double purpose. Obviously, you address the short term, the immediacy of the situation at GIS. But the next thing that you have to do is look to our future. And you heard repeatedly in this House that 63% of working Canadians today don't have a pension, they don't have savings, and where are we going to be in 35 years? There's going to be a wall that these people will strike. Mr. Speaker, it is crucial that this House starts working together to do something to increase the Canada Pension Plan. And we've made a proposal that says if you do put 2.5% in as the worker and the employer puts 2.5%, and in 35 years, you have a double Canada Pension Plan. Now, we have had two disputes in the labor movement just recently with Air Canada, with Canada Post. And guess what they're trying to do in both those instances? Destroy 
the defined benefit pension plans. And those people who have worked for 35 years at those companies, I had an email from one person who was going to retire in two months and he expected to retire at Air Canada on $1,600 a month and has that proposal gone through, he'd have only had $800 to retire, thus he couldn't retire. And we have all these stories coming out of the government where they're going to let seniors work longer. The idea was always that we could move the senior to a retirement where they can live in dignity, enjoy some time with the spouses that they've been away from all of their years. And so when this attack comes, it's going to be the responsibility of the government of the day to look to the future. And we have to look to the future with an investment. And workers are willing to pay part of that investment. And guess what? Increasing Canada Pension Plan, doubling Canada Pension Plan, won't cost this government one penny. Canadians have always been prepared to pay their way, and this is one more time. Now, we've heard proposals in different places about, you know, voluntary types of programs. Well, if a voluntary worked, they'd have money in the bank now. They would have set up their own plans now. The reality is, is we have to help Canadians focus themselves. I myself didn't look to my future until I was into my 50s, which is a long time ago now, come to think of it. But the reality is most young people don't. They have these items out there that, that sparkle so brightly, you know, your iPads, your iPhones, or whatever. And so they, they invest in their, their time in those, their energies in those. We need to help them as a government. We have to show leadership in this place. The other thing about the Canada Pension Plan, it is totally portable in this country. So if there's a downturn in one area, they're free to move to another area and take that pension plan with them. So I, I really want to stress that here today. But I want to come back a little bit. And Mr. Speaker, you may have to correct me because I have a tendency to turn and talk to the other side. You know, and I know I'm supposed to speak through the speaker, but I can't help myself because I know there's good people sitting over there. And so you, you try to appeal to them with the various stories and things that happen. And, and you'll know, Mr. Speaker, because you've heard it perhaps more than most about the two years, the two summers I spent as the critic going to seniors' meetings at 40 community meetings, 20 each summer for the last two summers. And there's heart-rending stories that you hear at those times. And I've, I've repeated them before, but they still bear repeating today. In St. Thomas, there's a woman short of her retirement years by a couple of years. Her husband, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to change that. She had retired. Her husband was short, and he had a stroke, and he was getting medication. Now, we have all kinds of buzzwords, and one of the buzzwords in the world today is delisting. And she was sitting there and her husband had a $90 a month prescription that just got delisted by the province of Ontario. And she says, what am I going to do? Where am I going to find $90? That was before HST. And speaking of HST, in Elliott Lake, and I won't forget this woman, you'll, you find it interesting. They, always, they don't talk in front of me. They always take you aside because this is very personal for them. She says, my hydro bill is $2,100 a year. They're talking about an HST. Where am I going to find the money? The $160 a month. Where am I going to find it? God help that woman. The price of hydro has gone up plus the HST. And I don't... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm down to one minute already. I can't believe it. Uh, I, I, I just want to stress, if I've only got a minute left, the importance of putting aside rhetoric. A fact in this country is that banks got $22 billion profit last year. The fact that they took $11 billion and gave them bonuses to their executives is shameful. And the people on that side of the House can do something about this. And they can take monies like that simply by postponing the tax cut, and they can genuinely work to raise seniors above poverty. And I believe, Mr. Speaker, that's what this House could do and I look forward to the future of this debate because I know this will be going on for some time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.